Smart Baby Seeds. There are three brain rules in this chapter. The brain cares about survival before learning. Intelligence is more than IQ. And FaceTime, not screen time. Nothing in President Theodore Roosevelt's early life suggested even a whiff of future greatness. He was a sickly child, nervous and timid, and so asthmatic he had to sleep upright in bed to keep from asphyxiating. He was too ill to attend formal classes, forcing his parents to school him at home. Because of a serious heart condition, his doctor suggested he find a line of work that tethered him to a desk job and by all means avoid strenuous physical activity. Fortunately, Roosevelt's mind did not cooperate with either his body or his doctor. Possessed of a voracious intellect, a photographic memory, and a ceaseless need to achieve, he wrote his first scientific paper, The Natural History of Insects, at the age of nine. He was accepted to Harvard at the age of 16, graduating Phi Beta Kappa, ran for the state legislature at age 23, and published his first scholarly book, A History of the War of 1812, the next year. He gained a reputation as a thought-provoking historian, and eventually an able politician, and zoologist, and philosopher, geographer, warrior, and diplomat. He became commander-in-chief at the age of 42, the youngest ever. He remains the only president awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor and was the first American to win the Nobel Peace Prize. What made Roosevelt so darn smart, given his less-than-auspicious start? Clearly, genetics helped our 26th president. On average, nature controls about 50% of a person's intellectual horsepower, and environment determines the rest. This means two things. First, no matter how hard your child tries, there will be limits to what his brain can do. Second, that's only half of the story. Aspects of your child's intelligence will be deeply influenced by his environment, especially by what you do as parents. We'll look at both the seed and the soil. This chapter discusses the biological basis of a child's intelligence. The next chapter explains what you can do to optimize it. What a smart brain looks like. If you could peer inside your baby's brain, would there be clues to her future intellectual greatness? What does intelligence look like in the twists and folds of the brain's convoluted architecture? One obvious, if ghoulish, way to answer these questions is to look at the brains of smart people after they have died and seek clues to intelligence in their neural architecture. Scientists have done this with a variety of famous brains, from the mathematical German Carl Gauss to the not-so-mathematical Russian Vladimir Lenin. They've studied Albert Einstein's brain, too, with surprising results. Just your average genius. Einstein died in New Jersey in 1955. His autopsy was performed by Thomas Stoltz Harvey, who must go down as the most possessive pathologist in history. He excised the famous physicist's brain and photographed it from many angles. Then he chopped the brain into tiny blocks. Then he got into trouble. Harvey apparently did not secure permission from Einstein or his family to pixelate the physicist's famous brain. Princeton Hospital administrators demanded that Harvey surrender Einstein's brain. Harvey refused, forfeited his job, fled to Kansas, and held the preserved samples for more than 20 years. They were not rediscovered until 1978, when journalist Stephen Levy tracked down Harvey. Einstein's cerebral bits were still available, floating in large mason jars filled with alcohol. Levy persuaded Harvey to give up the tissues. Other scientists studied them in detail for clues that would reveal Einstein's genius. What did they discover? The most surprising finding was that there was nothing surprising. Einstein had a fairly average brain. The organ had a standard internal architecture. There were a few structural anomalies. The regions responsible for visual spatial cognition and math processing were a bit larger, 15% fatter than average. He was also missing some sections that less agile brains possess, accompanied with a few more glial cells than most people carry. Glial cells help give the brain its structure and assist with information processing. None of these results is very instructive, unfortunately. Most brains possess structural abnormalities. Some regions are more shrunken than others, some more swollen. 
Because of this individuality, it is currently impossible to demonstrate that certain physical differences in brain structure lead to genius. Einstein's brain certainly was smart, but not one of its dice-sized pieces would definitively tell us why. Given our current understanding, brain architecture cannot successfully predict whether or not your child is going to be smart.